They offered me Ace Ventura, one of those, because it was a script that was yeah. just floating around. around. These producer came to me and said, well, maybe you and Rob, who's that dude from SNL who's really Schneider? conservative? Yeah, Rob Schneider. Yeah. I was like, no, I passed on it. Jim took it and said, I'm going to do what I'm going to, you know, I'm going to this out. Yeah. <laughs> Everything. Yes. He really was like a cancer patient. And they said, sir, you're dying in six months. Great. Your only shot. Role and action. <laughs> I sat next to him at the premiere and I felt so bad for Jim because, you know, nobody's going to see this crazy movie. Mm -hmm. We used to kid each other. And I said, Jim, if I ever win the lot uh, 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 lottery, I'm going to give you $5 million. And we would play around so you can make your movie. Jim Carrey would do this character called Colon Man where he mm -hmm. could pull his colon out of his ass, small intestines, and lasso criminals and suck you right back into his ass and hold you for the police. Uh -huh. You know, shit like, yeah. just to add each other crying. Uh -huh. So I said, I want you to do that, okay? Do that. If I ever win the lottery, this is going on. That's what he did, basically. He, he made that, Colin Man. Uh, yes. No, he, he, yeah, yeah. Ace Ventura? Yeah. There was a point where I think, he, what was the love interest? What's her name from Friends? Courtney Cox. Yeah, they were there, and it was like, Jim had been so crazy, and I said, you know, literally she's like something like, hello, Ace. And I said, okay, this is, Jim's going to be normal now. <laughs> <laughs> he went, <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, oh, my God, oh, my God. So I came out, I saw Chris Rock in the lobby. This was at the same screening at Westwood, and I said, man. Chris, I don't know what I'm going to do, man. I feel bad for Jim, but I'm going to support him because I was laughing. He was so nervous. He was crawling out of his seat. But nobody's going to see this movie. It's too crazy. I just thought, this is too crazy for yeah. America. Chris put his hand on my shoulder like an older brother. He said, no one, David, is going to see this movie. <laughs> so, you listen to me. Exactly. I said, yeah. okay, I'm not crazy. And you know what yes. happened next? Yes. It blew Over up. Over $27 million. It blew, it blew yeah. up. And I forgot, Jim was on Howard Stern, and he was saying like the next day, you know, that next week, we were back doing In Living uh -huh. Color. And we would come out and play with the audience and stuff. And uh, he described how I came out there. And I was like, you know, during the whole bit, like uh, Jim's movie opened last week. And um uh, I just want to say good luck, you know. I'm not <laughs> jealous or any fucking thing, you know, so no anger here. Uh, you heard the Mooney, or not, uh, George Wallace and Jerry Seinfeld fortune telling story? Mm -mm. Been confirmed by both of them. They drive out here from New York, literally in like a Ford LTD. They're here, they're on Melrose. It's 1977, neither of them are, they've both been doing stand-up two, three years. Go to a fortune teller. And uh, Fortune Teller looks at George Wallace's hand and is like, or Palm Reader, and says, uh, why, you're going to be very, very rich, right? George is like, fucking great. Next one up, Jerry Seinfeld looks at Jerry's hand and goes, I thought you were going to be rich. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I, my life is more like this. As wrong as I was about Jim Carrey's movie, oh, I auditioned for Seinfeld. And I came away... Like, well, this sucks. Number one, Jerry can't <laughs> Fuck act the judges his way. Eddie, exactly. Eddie's joke. Yeah, Jerry can't act his way out of a paper bag. Mm -hmm. Good luck. Mm -hmm. And we saw again. him on Benson. <laughs> right, right. But the historical society's coming to dinner. Got some great jokes the governor can use. <laughs> you want to hear them? You're not a joke writer, Frankie. You're a messenger. Please, I'm a curry. Then go curry. <laughs> Wrong again. So whatever I say, go the other fucking way. Yeah. Similar to that story. Uh, it was numerology. So he, he does my wife's numbers. I'm like, oh, wow. Well, you know what? There's a lot of struggle. A lot of issues. Uh, it looks very dark for you now. But you're going to make it out. And there will be some daylight in a few years. Something like that. Tied right into her story. She gets to me and she goes, <laughs> same thing. Wow. You are, I've never seen numbers like this. You haven't even come into your own. Uh, she said, you're probably going to start really coming into your career and your fame and your fortune when you're 33. Uh, I was like, really? And we get How old car, are you at this point? 30. Oh, okay. Something like that. Just wait it out. We get in the we get on the we get in the uh gypsy cab to go home and she was crying. We just fought for two days. Yeah, because I got a better reading. Yeah. 
Well, no, we divorced. I know you got we divorced it. Shortly after sure. That. Uh, did she get half of the thirty-three-year-old money? Uh, she got half of whatever that money I got. Okay. You know? And uh, we've built back since then. That's fantastic. Fine. Yeah, and I hope she's happy. That's but wait, all we what did George Wallace do? Was he an insurance salesman? He had some straight. I can't job. remember. Like an accountant. Yeah. For a while. Dude, when I started going on the road, I think it was Indianapolis, something like that. I come into this club. My shit was, I'm doing two shows. I don't give a fuck how many tickets I sell. I'm not doing three shows because I went through that and I get burned out. And three shows a night for me, one of those shows is going to suck so mm -hmm. fucking bad. The last one. Exactly. Yeah. Have you ever been on? This happened to me where you tell a joke and it's like, did I already tell Did that I, joke? Yeah, all the time. Oh, my God. Anyway, yeah. they said George Wallace. As bad as my concussion is? <laughs> I can't remember. George, God this, this, is what the, this is what the chick said. George Wallace was doing six shows a day. They started at 2 in the afternoon. And between shows, he would have dinner at the bar. And talk to people the whole time. As they were coming in. The most affable guy. Oh, yeah. Literally energized by the presence of people. Loves comedy. Came to see me in Atlanta last time I was there. A I love fantastic George. guy. I love George, but I could never, ever do that. Of course not, but that's just, that's personality-wise. Yes. Hey, did you like that? Did you like that? Yeah, did you like it, though? You want more? Don't want to work? Would rather watch videos of me grab-assing with people? First of all, go up here to subscribe, and then go up here to uh, watch more clips. This is like when the weatherman says that there's a high pressure system coming in. I'm, a little, I'm not really used to the green screen.